What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting. Hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we've got the Akintoshin 3 Wood. Stick around. All right, so we've got the Akintoshin 3 Wood with us today. And you know, I didn't check, so I'm not sure, but I think this is the first Lowland whiskey I've ever reviewed on the channel. I don't buy a lot of Lowland whiskeys, and it's not traditionally my favorite style of whiskey. It's often a little bit too light for me. But that being said, they do have some cool stuff coming from the region these days. Those of you who have tried stuff like Bladnuck or um, Daft Mill probably know what I'm talking about. But our Akintosh is not something that's making waves like those other brands are. This is not a, a whiskey that people lose their minds over or hype up too much. It's something I do think is pretty overlooked by most whiskey enthusiasts myself included. Like, I really don't buy much from this brand. I've only had a handful of their expressions over the years. And funnily enough, this is one that I have actually had before, so this one's a rebuy. But it's been a super long time since my last bottle. I think it's 10, 10 plus years since I last had Akintosh and Three Wood. So, of course, in that time, the whiskey will have changed. My tastes have definitely changed. And, you know, I was in the shop the other day. I noticed this one was on sale, so I grabbed it. I figured, you know, let's see where it's at. So this one's triple distilled, it's matured in bourbon casks, Oloroso sherry casks, and PX casks. Now this is officially a no age stated bottling, but I have heard that it's around 12 years old. Of course, I have no way of confirming that. If any of you out there have any kind of insight into how old this whiskey is, do let me know down in the comments. Now based on memory going way, way back, 10 plus years like I said, I remember this whiskey being not very impressive. I remember thinking it was kind of like okay or generic. Definitely nothing too special, nothing too interesting. But you know, I have heard that the newer versions of this are different from the older ones, for better or for worse. And of course, I wouldn't expect anything to be the same after 10 years. So you know what? This one might actually win me over. You never know. Let's jump into our review, see what the whiskey is all about. And in the meantime, if you could kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Our ABV on this one comes in at 43%. It is chill filtered. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to suspect this might be colored. Yeah, they threw buckets of E150A in this stuff. But you know what? If you check out the official website, that's not where they say the color comes from. Here's what it says on the website. You can expect a rich golden brown color in your bottle of Three Wood. What gives the whiskey its color? As the single malt matures in the quality bourbon and sherry barrels, a new and complex color and flavor profile is created over time. Sure it is. Of course, our color here is pretty ridiculous, but if we're just going for the bottle, the label, the look overall, you know what? I do actually kind of like it. It's got a nice minimalist, kind of sleek, kind of modern look to it. Uh, I like the bottle shape here. I like the blue and black color scheme. If you're a fan of a more traditional look, you might not go for this one, but I tend to have pretty modern sensibilities. So this one is a solid four out of five for presentation. Obviously nothing about color or chill filtration. They do tell us on the front what barrels they use to mature it in. And this is kind of fun. On the back, they give us the phonetic, or not phonetic, but they, they sound out how you're meant to say Akintoshin, which is, I think it's helpful. Not a lot of brands do that. I often mispronounce stuff, which is something you guys are always all too eager to point out. But, you know, that's just kind of a fun extra. Overall, yeah, the color's silly, but the bottle, I like it. So I did not, nor would I ever add water to a 43% whiskey. Let's try our nose. Right away, this is pretty sherry forward, uh, but not a typical sherry. Uh, more like lush and sweet and dense. I'm definitely getting some jammy notes in here. Strawberry jam, blueberry jam. Uh, there's chocolate in here. I'm also getting a little bit of like uh, wintergreen chewing tobacco. I'm getting leather, I'm getting wood, wood varnish and orange oil. You know what? I kind of like this nose. And now our palate. Hmm. You know, it's pretty dense, pretty chewy for 43%. Um, right away, oak, big sherry, wood varnish, um, Blueberry Jam, again, you know, Three Oak is a good name. Uh, this is very oaky. 
I'm getting more of that chewing tobacco note. We've got dark chocolate, Terry's chocolate orange, chocolate raisins, lots of chocolatey notes, and some herbal notes in there as well. And now our finish. Okay. Um, yeah, things drop off a bit here. This is where the 43% in this whiskey really does it a disservice. Uh, it's definitely very drying, very oaky, and we have this kind of like odd herbal minty note in here, which is actually pretty interesting. There's wintergreen throat lozenges in here. There's more of that wood varnish note. Interesting notes, but they all just kind of like fall off a cliff really abruptly. It's a short finish. As I mentioned earlier, my last bottle of this stuff was like 10 plus years ago, and at the time I found it kind of not bad, but just sort of like generic, not very interesting, not a lot to write home about, but this stuff is different. This is very far from what I remember it being. And I mean that in a positive way because I had a pretty negative impression going into this stuff, and I actually think it's pretty good. Now, it's definitely a flawed whiskey, and it's not going to be for everyone, but yeah, it is good. Um, that being said, I should warn those of you out there who prefer like more traditional or old school style or character to your whiskey, you're not getting that here. This is a very modern whiskey. From the super active casks to the technically perfect engineered style that we're getting here, uh, even our label, everything about this whiskey feels modern except one thing. And that one thing is the bucket loads of E150A or caramel colorant that they dumped into this stuff. Now I'm not going to go on a rant here, but colorant is outdated. It's a vestige from a bygone era before whiskey consumers knew or understood that whiskey, natural whiskey, comes in a variety or a spectrum of colors. But, you know, we have the internet now. We have online communities. We have bloggers and vloggers and websites. We have all these resources. People are researching. People know their shit. They don't want this anymore. So when you dump this much color into your whiskey, all you're telling me is that you're completely out of touch with the modern consumer and what they want. So. That's me not ranting. Um, you know, now that I've taken a huge steaming pile of shit on this whiskey, let me tell you what I like about it. I like that this kind of reminds me of a few specific expressions from Dalmore that I like. I really like the Sherry Cast Select. I really like the Cigar Malt. I know that's controversial. Dalmore's not for everyone, but I really enjoy them. This is not on that level. It's nowhere near that level, but it's sort of, it's trying to do what those whiskeys do. Um, and you know, I think with a few tweaks, I think with some natural presentation and maybe a little bit more creativity behind it, this could be a beautiful and luxurious whiskey. Unfortunately, this does fall short. It's not a luxurious whiskey, but it's almost there. I do like the nose and you know, the arrival and the palate are surprisingly dense and chewy for something that comes in at 43%. Unfortunately, that 43% really hurts the finish. Like I said, it just kind of falls off a cliff flavor wise. And that's disappointing because it's got some interesting flavors in the finish that I wish I could explore more, but they're just gone. I also like the oakiness in here and you know, it's almost too much. It's walking a very fine line, but it does work. It does strike a balance and you know, that oakiness, it kind of comes together with some herbal elements in here, subtle herbal elements, but they're in there. Those two come together and they sort of counterbalance that sweetness. Still, that drop in quality that we see at the finish is too much for me. I made a graph here indicating just where the disappointment starts. And like I said, this would be a good whiskey otherwise. Like it really is a shame that the finish is so, I guess, underwhelming is the right word. So I'm gonna score this an 82. I was considering maybe 83 or 84, but no, 82 sounds about right. And yes, that is a pretty low score for something that I keep saying I like, but that's that's just where I landed on it. Um. And you know, it's weird. This whiskey is weird. I'd call it uh, an anomaly almost because it's very densely flavored, but then that density just kind of disappears with the finish. Um, it's very oaky, but it's neither old nor sophisticated. Uh, it's very richly flavored, but then somehow too light at the same time. So it's an odd whiskey, but at least it's not boring. So I think our value here is fine. I don't think it's a great deal. I don't think it's a ripoff. It's an entry level whiskey. I think it's priced appropriately. So I don't really have any strong like opinions about the value here. So listen, if the description sounds interesting to you, grab it. It should be worth the money. 
All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, please consider becoming a patron. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. That's always appreciated, and I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our Akintosh and 3-Wood? What were your thoughts? Finally, down in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.